Let me start this video by asking you a question. What does this, 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 and this game all have in common? If you answered they are all video games, then congratulations, you're correct. But also, I hate you for being a smart ass because that is clearly not the answer I want. Still, it does raise an interesting point that is perhaps a topic of discussion for another video. You'll probably find many commonalities between all these games. Due to that, I'll go ahead and give you the answer. All of these games involve, in some way, shape or form, frogs. And before we go on, I hear you saying, The prisoner, I see battle toads there and toads are not frogs. Well, the very first Google result says otherwise, and that is good enough for me to include toads in a frog video, okay? And also, before we continue, if it wasn't already clear by the title, thumbnail, and six games shown here, this will be a video about frogs in video games. I won't show any pictures of real-life frogs in case anyone's afraid, but be warned, I'll still show their video game counterparts. And speaking of those, if you were interested in any of the games I just showed and quite a few of the games I will show, which really are just clips of the games that I just showed anyway, fret not, I will talk more about them at the end of the video. Also, don't worry as no spoilers will be given for any of the games. Anyway, now that's taken care of, let's get back on topic, shall we? Recently, I was looking through Steam and I realized something. There are a lot of frog-related games. Like, way more than I'd expect. And that's weird, right? I mean, if I search for, say, the word bird, I'm pretty sure I get less or at least the same amount of games as frog games. Animals like bees, rats, and cows don't even come close to the frogs in the quantity of games. In fact, only two animals that I've found so far beat them cats and dogs, obviously. Keep in mind, this was just me searching the word frog on Steam Search. There might be other games, such as Blaster, that are themed around frogs and don't include the term in the name. Or cases such as Battletoads, which include a subspecies of frogs in their name, the toads. So, like, the point is, there are lots of games involving frogs and I have no idea why. So I decided to make this potentially completely pointless video to ponder out loud and see if I can work out the motives for this animal's popularity in gaming. Care to join me? Upon starting the process of making this video, I had in my mind a few theories as to why frogs were chosen from so many indie games. But while I was writing them down and preparing myself to present them here, I figured, hey, why not question the devs regarding their choice for frogs instead of guessing reasons? Turns out I didn't really have to go that far, as there are some interviews already that touch on the subject. Ah, I just really love it when I find out that my prep work has already been done for me. So. I'd like to start exploring the subject by bringing up a Game Rant review with Raul Martinez Garrido, developer of the game Frogun. It's very interesting in general and can be seen in full in the link available in the description, but the main question that I'd like to highlight is this. It reads, There have been few frog-themed indie games of late, including projects like Frog Song. Do you think there's something appealing about the animal? How did you land on Frogun's narrative? To which Raul replies, Frogs are simply very cool. They are small, jumpy, they have googly eyes. Nobody can see a frog is threatening. They're little friends. Also, their sticky tongue is very unique, even if they are not the only animals with that trait, so it fit very well with a grappling hook mechanic. Well, Raul, the bugs from Frog Factions would certainly disagree with your nobody can see a frog as threatening statement, but I get the sentiment. Basically, the first big point here is that frogs are awesome. Personally, I agree, and it seems that the sentiment is shared by other developers. 
According to a rock paper shotgun article, Grace Bruxner, the mind behind Frog Detective, is also a big fan of frogs, and thus one of the reasons for the choice behind the game's protagonist. She also likes Agatha Christie's Poirot. Poirot? I, I, I'm sorry, I'm terrible at pronouncing, but you know the character, I know the character. It's a good character. And honestly, props to her, because that is some impeccable taste. But anyway, while some people are scared of frogs, it turns out that simply finding them cool, cute, adorable and similar adjectives is not uncommon at all. And honestly, that's as good a reason as any to make the animal a protagonist or a theme in the game. But if that was the only reason for frogs to be so common in the gaming world, there would not be a video here right now about it. Raul also brings up a second point, which is a frog's tongue. When you think about it, frogs have a set of skills and characteristics that are incredibly unique and perfectly fit to the world of video games. A frog can jump pretty high, can stick to surfaces and swim fast, which are all abilities that can easily aid a player during a platformer or exploration-focused title, to name a couple of examples. This is easily seen in many games, but the one that most caught my attention was, surprisingly enough, Mario Odyssey. For those unaware, the title allows you to use your cap to possess creatures. This serves as a main mechanic for the game, and it is introduced by having you take control of... well, you guessed it, a frog. At least I hope you guessed it, because that's like the only animal we're talking about. But anyway, and then you proceed to be immediately given the option to jump super high and swim fast. Platforming skills aside, frogs can also be poisonous, which can serve as a source of weapon or power-up in the game. And then we have a frog's tongue. The truth is that it can do a lot in the game. And you know, since I know this is the internet and some of your minds will immediately go there, let me address it. Yes, there is at least one hentai game about a frog on Steam. Don't ask me how I know, I'd like to keep my dignity. Now, moving on. As the frog and developer both mentioned and reproduced in this game, you can use the sticky tongue as a grappling hook, both to move your character and to move other objects to your character. But aside from that, you also see examples such as feeding on enemies to heal HP, as is the case with Battletoads, and it can even be used as a long-range attack on enemies due to how long their tongue is. So, long story short, frogs are not just awesome, but they also possess abilities that translate really well to video games. Another point that I'd like to highlight is that frogs are also popular in other forms of media. Some popular examples include things such as the Frog King, which is a Grimm Brothers tale, Disney's Princess and the Frog, which is their adaptation of said tale to an animation format, Crazy Frog and the music side of things, and Kermit the Frog on TV. Furthermore, even within gaming, some of the classics involved frogs and may very well have influenced countless games since. Some examples would include the 90s versions of Battletoads, which are the hard ones in case you're confused, Ranarama, and, of course, Frogger. But despite all this, the things that might have most influenced the choice of frogs as a main character and theme in modern video games at least are... Memes. The DNA of the soul. Internet memes. In an interview available on Nintendo Everything site, Time on Frog Island developer states, and I quote, that using humanoid frogs as the island locals was actually a completely random decision made by our artist. The sailor was made first and was totally human, but we knew we wanted the islanders to be completely different. One of the first concept pieces we got back was an image of the sailor sitting with a large frog by a tree and it just felt so charming and relaxing. Frogs being popular on the internet was never part of our decision process, but we totally lucked out when we started posting content onto social media. The fact that the choice was random is already interesting in itself, but I'd like to focus our discussion on the very last sentence, the one about them lucking out in regards to frogs being popular on the internet. 
And upon thinking about it, I realized he is entirely correct. The internet loves frogs and its memes, starting potentially all the way back in television with Kermit the Frog, who continues to be used in memes to this day. There is an article by website Nylon in the description of the video that goes into it a bit more in depth than I will, but needless to say, anyone listening to this has most likely already heard of Pepe the Frog, one of the most popular memes that has graced the internet and continues to do so since the mid-2000s. Others, such as that boy, our classic unicycle frog, also continue to show up on occasion on my feeds, though no one has quite managed to explain to me why it's on a unicycle to begin with. But regardless, the important thing is, the internet loves frogs, and if this fact didn't influence the decision of some developers when setting frogs as main characters and themes, it certainly influenced their popularity as was the case with time on Frog Island. At the end of the day though, this is all just speculation, and we may never find a true set in stone answer for the frog phenomenon in gaming. Or maybe it doesn't even exist and I'm just seeing a pattern when there's none. I tend to do that. Regardless, writing about this was cathartic. And if you've managed to listen to me talk about frogs for over 10 minutes now, well, I can only say thank you. But don't worry, as I have even more to say on the subject. The last thing I want to point out is that this whole subject shows us the versatility of the gaming medium. A simple idea, frogs, can create dozens of different games in all sorts of genres, even adult games. Sure, this characteristic isn't exclusive to games, as one could probably create movies and books about frogs in all genres, but it doesn't matter. It still doesn't change the fact that it is a great example of versatility in gaming. If you're still not convinced, I'd like to recommend 6 games for you to check out, as they are all mostly in wildly different genres. And I also just really want to recommend and talk about frog games. No idea why, it's just an urge, you know? It happens. Just a quick warning that these won't be full reviews like I sometimes do on the channel, self-promotion. Uh, just a quick recommendation else this video will be a lot longer than it already is. But if you find yourself with any questions or need more information, feel free to drop a comment or add me on Steam or anything, I'm always down to talk. And again, don't worry, there are no spoilers. So, the first game I want to talk about is Battletoads. I'm talking specifically about the reboot here, but really, most versions work if you want to play the older ones. I'm only focusing on the reboot because it's arguably the easiest to access nowadays due to it being on Steam and other storefronts. This is a beat-em-up that continues the story that the original game started in the 90s. Despite being repetitive at times, I had a good time playing this, especially given how the stages often have minigames in between them to mix things up a little and probably give your fingers a rest if you're anything like me and strongly mash your controller's buttons in a beat-em-up. Be warned though that while I found some jokes funny, the humor can be very hit or miss. Usually a miss, depending on who you ask. And the story does leave something to be desired. It also has co-op, which to me is a huge plus. If you're interested, you can get this title on both PC and Xbox. Next up on the list is Frog Detective. This is more of a 3 for 1 source of deal, as there are currently 3 Frog Detective games out. This one is in a genre more akin to a walking simulator than anything else. You play as the titular frog, which happens to be a detective, and each game is one case. The mysteries aren't dark or extremely complex or anything, but the games are honestly very charming in both their art style and their writing. I often found myself smiling at the dialogue, giggling a bit at some jokes, and honestly just had a very relaxing time with the games. That's pretty rare in my life nowadays, so I gladly welcome it. Plus, look at the detective! He's adorable! Seriously, look! Look at him! <laughs> uh, if this title seems interesting to you, you can find it on PC. Rogan is the third game of our list. In this game, your character has a gun that's shaped and gives you the ability of a frog. Thus, Rogan. Get it? Frog, gun, frogun, yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? No? 
Everyone's silent? Okay. Well, anyway, the game is a PS1 style 3D platformer. It nails the graphics and it has a really fun level design, with a pretty interesting twist when it comes to the gun itself, which shoots a frog tongue and allows you to interact with your environment and enemies from afar. It's also quite frustrating at times, so keep that in mind. If you're interested in picking this up, it's on all modern platforms. The fourth game that I want to talk about is Carol Blaster. It's by the same brilliant mind behind Cave Story and is a side-scroller platformer. The gameplay feels great and very reminiscent of older 90s games. The frog element here comes from the main character itself, which is a frog. The stages are all linear and can get pretty tough, especially later on. This game was honestly a joy to play through and if you like what you're seeing on camera right now, I highly recommend picking it up. You can do so on PC, PS4, Nintendo Switch or Android. The fifth game on this list is Time on Frog Island. Now this game is a doozy. Wait, do people still say that? Doozy? Or am I showing both my age and the fact that I'm not a native English speaker? Well, regardless, the game is an adventure and exploration game. In it, you're shipwrecked on an island inhabited mostly by frogs, and you must figure out a way to get back home. This is also an extremely relaxing experience, full of secrets awaiting to be found. If you want it, you can find it on all modern platforms. Last, but certainly not least, I'd be remiss not to mention Frog Fractions. Back when it was originally released, this game took the internet by storm. What started development as a mere Missile Commander clone, this game came to be released as a very unique product. I can't really talk or show much of it without spoiling what makes it special, but just trust me on this one. If you haven't played it, do so. I can't even describe this game as genre, because it's honestly something that often changes. The game has a couple of sequels and can be found on PC. And that's it! I honestly have no idea what prompted me to make this entire video, but I'm really glad that I did. This was a fun subject to ponder about, even if a proper, correct answer isn't exactly possible. All I can do now is leave you with one question. Do you like frogs? Who's your favorite gaming frog and why is it frog from Chrono Trigger? And yes, I know those were three questions, I never claimed to know math, despite Frog Fractions' pseudo-attempt at teaching me fractions and decimals. And well, now it's time for that good old YouTube thing that people do at the end of videos. If you like this, please do like and subscribe as it really helps out my channel's growth. And remember to comment as well, especially if you have feedback. I love hearing from all of you. That aside, I'm hopping off. See you next time, and goodbye!